Hello everyone, my name is Mohammad Azmal, I'm the founding engineer of iMesh and in this session we'll have a look at Waypoint Proxy and how it is different from the traditional sidecar based approach. As we know in Ambient Mesh there are two components that is Z tunnel and the Waypoint Proxy. The Z tunnel is opposed to the uh, zero trust tunnel that is running on per node basis and Waypoint Proxy that handles the all the L7 routing is either deployed on the basis of namespace or service account. In the sidecar based uh, uh, Istio, we know that in each pod there was an injected env envoy proxy, which is not the case in this ambient mesh. And the way to apply the waypoint proxy is using the gateway CRD, and this is uh, similar to the Kubernetes gateway API. In, in here, we are using the gateway class name as Istio Waypoint, and we are providing the listeners and whatever the namespace you want it to be, you can provide that. So uh, uh, to know more about the uh, Gateway API, again, we have a video in our channel. You can definitely have a look at that. But why, why is it the case in the new and improved ambient mesh, they chose to get rid of the sidecar based approach. So there are some issues with the sidecar. That is, uh, so there are two things. One is the source and the destination. So whether your source deployment is talking to the destination deployment, there are few routing rules or other rules that need to be applied. In the sidecar based approach, the request routing, traffic shifting and all those kind of rules were applied at the source end and the security and other rules were applied at the destination end. This caused uh, some issues in the sidecar based approach which is here as follows. So each source needs to know about each and every de destination that is present in the system. And as a result, uh, if your destination is growing or your number of sources are growing, the number of configurations that you are going to add is going to tremendously increase. As each sidecar needs to have an understanding of other destination or other sources. And as a result in any change in the destination's configuration, all the sidecar needs to be notified simultaneously, causing a lot of, uh, you know, kind of like reconfiguration and all those things. In it's also difficult to debug as there are two sets of policies now. We have to take care of request routing, traffic shifting, fault injection and much more that is at the source end and all the securities that is present, security configuration and all that is taken at the destination end. As a result, debugging and managing it becomes quite hard. And even in a mixed environment where you are working with a part of microservice which is not in the service mesh, there could be a lot of inconsistent behavior happening because the policies which are not applied to a specific sidecar which is that the sidecar doesn't exist altogether in a non ambient non mesh uh, deployments it's going to cause a lot of trouble and it might cause some un, un, uh, like unrequired uh, traffic flow and all those things the ownership and attribution is also affected as the policies are not written specifically for the namespace they are being managed by the sidecar itself causing it uh, to be less optimal and very tough to manage. So the ambient mesh approach is as follows, that all the policies that are enforced are always applied at the destination waypoint. Nothing is taken care at the source end. So making sure that all the policies and configuration, whether it is routing and security, everything is dealt at one point, making it easier for you to debug and understand. The waypoint proxy just acts like a gateway. It's not a injected envoy proxy. It's not a sidecar. It acts like a gateway for the namespace or the service account. And uh, that makes it even easier for you to understand that, okay, the traffic is flowing through this particular gateway only. It's not uh, jumbled up between the different sidecars that are present. Istio also enforces that all the traffic that's going through a particular namespace will go through the waypoint proxies if it exists. So even if you're calling the services from a non a mesh uh, to a mesh uh, uh, namespace, it's going to go through the waypoint proxy anyways. Each waypoint proxy only needs to know the configuration about its own namespace. It's not a case that, okay, you need to understand that, okay, there's a lot of destination present in some other namespaces, I need to also have the configuration of it, which is what happens in case of the traditional sidecar based ambient mesh. Even if there are deployments in other namespaces, you need to have the entries present in your sidecar so the communication would be possible. And this is the comparison of the workload. So in the left, we have the sidecar approach. And in the sidecar approach, we have two namespace. And in each namespace, we have a red sidecar and the orange sidecar for namespace one. For namespace two, we have a purple and blue sidecar. 
you can see that each of the sidecar needs to have an understanding of all the other deployments that are present, causing it very tough to manage. Here we have around 16 combinations present here. But in case of the ambient mesh, it doesn't uh, have to kind of understand that, okay, there are different deployments in other namespaces. It only needs to worry about whatever I'm having in my namespace. And other communication is going to happen from waypoint to waypoint whenever it is necessary. As all the policies are now applied at the destination end, there is no requirement of source and destination understanding to be there. In case of the sidecar, we are, uh, we are going to do that using uh, entries related to all the other deployment. But in case of ambient mesh, that is not a requirement. So let's understand how the traffic goes uh, from the Z tunnel to the waypoint proxy. Now, as you know that uh, the waypoint proxy is now not restricted just uh, to the sidecars. It is now deployed uh, as a different pod itself in the namespace. So as a result, you can either scale it or scale down depending on your traffic. And whatever traffic that is flowing through waypoint, the policy evaluation is going to happen here at waypoint only. All the policies will be evaluated here. And once they're evaluated, then they're going to the specific uh, Z tunnel and through that they're going to a specific service that is present here. Now the good thing about this is you don't have to manage a lot of sidecars if you have a very high scale of uh, pods and deployments present here. So even if your S1 is uh, like you have 200 pods of S1, 300 of S2 and 500 of C3, uh, it, it doesn't really matter. In this case, what will happen? There are no sidecars involved. So you don't have around uh, 1000 instance of Envoy also being running and which is tough to manage, right? So in this case, although you can say that, okay, if my traffic is rising here, what about, uh, sorry, if my uh, scale is going to increase here, what about the waypoint proxy? Is it going to handle? Uh, well, it's definitely not going to handle by just one waypoint proxy. You can again scale it, but let us say just for the example that, okay, maybe I have 10 instances of waypoint proxy running which is still very, very less than having uh, 1,000 sidecars, isn't it? So uh, this is uh, the reason why the ambient mesh is much more faster in terms that, uh, sorry, in much more also optimal in terms of the sidecar approach because you don't, you don't have to manage a lot of injected envoys and all you have to do is scale your waypoint proxies to the requirement. So this was just an introduction to what the waypoint proxy is. We have already discussed about how to apply the L7 routing rules, how to apply uh, the policies and whatnot in the previous videos, make sure to check that. And this is just an overview why a waypoint proxy is necessary and it's better than the traditional sidecar based approach. Even in this case, now just imagine if you are scaling these pods, if you are scaling the purple sidecar and uh, red sidecar to maybe like 200 pods, you can see the number of entries rising, right? But in the case of the waypoint proxy, it's not going to affect at all. Even if you're having multiple pods, it, it's not going to affect. Although if you have multiple deployments, then again, the entries are going to be X number of deployments only. It's not going to be X into the number of pods and then into uh, you have like the total number of sidecars that is going to increase, that's not going to happen. So this is like a general introduction uh, about the uh, waypoint proxy. So that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have any question, please make sure to comment it down. I hope you have a good understanding of Waypoint Proxy now. Make sure to watch our previous videos uh, regarding Ambient Mesh to understand how to use the Waypoint Proxy and how to use the uh, Z-Tunnel. So that's all for today. Thank you very much.